So one thing Gordy Coleman was, was a player that everyone enjoyed because a big smile, a great love of the game, left us way too early. He wasn't even 60 when he passed away. But when Gordon Calvin, Gordy Coleman, played with the Reds, everybody enjoyed his, his hustle, his style, his personality, and he's dearly missed by the Reds faithful. Now, he played mostly first base for the Reds. Uh, played in MLB, uh, a short stint with Cleveland, then Cincinnati for a number of years. He helped the Reds win the 61 NL pennant and was inducted in the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame all the way back in 1972. So he was only uh, 38, ladies and gentlemen. In nine major league seasons, he appeared in 773 games with 98 home runs, 387 runs batted in, and a 273 batting average. Now, the native of Rockville, Maryland, debuted in Major League Baseball in the September call-ups for Cleveland on the 19th of September, 1959. Now, he uh, he came to major promises as a very young athlete, as he was a star, at Richard Montgomery High School, earning the letters in baseball, football, basketball, and track. He was all-state in football, led the school's basketball team to state finals his senior year. And in baseball, he excelled as both a pitcher and, of course, a hitter. Now, when he attended Duke, he was on a football scholarship, playing both baseball and football as a freshman. However, he was signed as an amateur free agent by the Indians prior to 53 season at age 18 and assigned to the Reading Indians of the Eastern League. He was an outfielder until being converted to a first baseman in the spring of 56. However, the Army called. He was out of baseball in 57 and 58 while serving the U.S. Army at Fort McPherson, Georgia. Now, uh, with a highly anticipated return to baseball in 59, it was with the Indians' AA affiliate, the Mobile Bears of the Southern Association, for whom he had played in 56 before going to U.S. Army. There he won the Triple Crown with 30 home runs, 110 runs batted in, and a stellar 3-53 average, earning promotion to the parent club. Now, when he made his major league debut for the Indians on September 9, 59, it was at the elderly age of 25 in a game hosted by the Athletics, and won by the Indians 13 to 7. Then one at bat at pinch hitter. He got his uh, first big league hit, a fifth inning triple, off Bob Grimm. Now, after one season with Cleveland, he was traded with Billy Martin and Cal McClish to the Cincinnati Reds for Johnny Temple. That doesn't happen every day. In 60, he split time with the Reds, who only played 66 games, and the Reds AAA affiliate Seattle Reniers of the Pacific Coast League. That's a long distance to play man or minor ball. Now, in the 61 World Series against the Yankees, he had a great series with five hits and 20 at-bats, batting 250 with one home run and two runs batted in. His two-run homer came in Game 2 at Yankee Stadium in a fourth inning off Ralph Terry and a 6-2 Reds win, which was their only victory of the uh, set. Now, he was the Reds' starting first baseman from 61 through 63. Then, in the following four seasons, he split time at first base with Darren Johnson and later Tony Perez. In 67... He's last in the major leagues. He played in two games for Reds, uh, but it, plays, it took the field most of the year with the Buffalo Bisons, the Reds AAA affiliate in the IL, and later with the Dodgers AAA affiliate, the Spokane Indians, hitting a combined 197. Now, after his playing career ended beginning in 68, he worked for many years in public relations for the Reds as director of the team Speakers Bureau, making hundreds of appearances speaking at civic and order organizations, events. He also served as a well-loved color commentator on the Reds TV broadcast from 90 to 94, of course, as the World Series in the 1990 campaign. Now, Coleman married his beautiful wife, Marion Huggins, in 1955. She still resides in Cincinnati, and he had one son, Sean. Unfortunately, Coleman, and this was bad news across the doorstep and across North America, America he died of a heart attack at age 59 on March 12, 94, in Cincinnati. The city of his birth, Rockville, Maryland, declared July 5, 2008, which would have been his 74th birthday, Gordy Coleman Day after a group of Richard Montgomery High School alumni sought to raise funds for a new baseball field scoreboard and a plaque commemorating Coleman life and the name the field in his honor. Now, the proclamation, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is quite, uh, is qu- quite interesting because it was done with so much love and so much uh, uh, tenderness. Now, the proclamation of mayor and council uh, with uh, Brenda Bean, the deputy city clerk, uh, coordinated. Now, uh, Gordon Calvin Coleman was born in Rockville, Maryland, on July 5th and lived up and grew on Horner's Lane. He entered Park Street Elementary School in 1940 
and graduated from Richard Montgomery High School in 52. While in high school, again, he was a star in multiple sports. Now, we attended Duke, and uh, the idea, ladies and gentlemen, that the Indians signing him and kept, uh, kept uh, him in baseball was very important. In 1960, he was traded to the Reds, again, which helped him win the pennant. Now, um, now, the uh, 1,068 total base in his career, 13 sacrifice hits, 28 sacrifice flies, and 25 intentional walks. Now, the request was brought by a group of high school alumni who were hoping to raise funds to construct, uh, construct a scoreboard, a new baseball field in his honor. So, uh, quite, uh, quite the thing. And if you're passing by that region, uh, like I said, uh, he's quite the, um, uh, what do you call, quite the hometown uh, uh, hero. Now, uh, the baseball reference, just want to go over the rough stats. Ladies and gentlemen, a big drink of water, 6 3 2 15. The best season, in my perspective, has to be the 62 campaign. 28 home runs, 86 RBIs, uh, batted uh, 277. He was a career 273 hitter. Now, he didn't break uh, 700 hits, but uh, of his 650 hits in Major League Baseball, 98 were home runs. He had 102 doubles, so a good a good uh, uh, power hitter, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the... Uh, the uh, the idea about the 62 uh, postseason, just the rough stats here. Uh, one home run, two RBIs, 250 batting average, and uh, again, eight total bases. He played in all uh, five contests. So, uh, and again, uh, uh, a good fielder as well with uh, a 990 uh, fielding, uh, fielding percentage. So, the thing, the thing is about players of the 1960s of the Reds, not to say they're forgotten, but they're so overshadowed by the big red machine, this guy would have fit right in but like I said from what a lot of people told me I've only seen him play once or twice the the contact off the ball was quite strong and you're 6'3", 215 and uh, you know when you get to Kingman size where you know 6'3", 6'4", he, uh, he obviously uh, he only played really two full seasons uh, 63 was only 400 uh, 365 at bats but like I said he was on an average season, you'd be a 21, a 20, 80 hitter, 20 home runs, 80, 80 RBIs. So, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate all the Cincinnati Reds fans that are dropping in for our different podcasts. We know baseball season, uh, you know, hasn't been the, the best for uh, Cincinnati this year, although there are some young prospects coming in. Uh, Cincinnati's always going to be popular in Canada. So, we're doing this podcast for our U.S. fans of the channel, but a lot of uh, Canadian fans love the Reds. They weren't as big fans of the Reds until, now just a little trivia for you, they would be shown quite often in a game of the week. There was a translated game on the French CBC at 2 o'clock every Saturday. I watched many of those games, and it was the best teams, and the best team at the time, the 70s, were the Reds. And I was never a Reds fan. I was more an Oakland A's fan. But when they won those, uh, finally won those World Series and the revenge win in 76 against the Reds, uh, it was full circle. And, of course, Pete Rose was a straw to stir the drink of that era. So that's uh, that's the story of uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Smiles, as I call him. Uh, I'm always impressed with uh, any fo- any baseball player that smiles heavily because he probably knows something we don't. If you like what you're doing here, we're a tribute podcast. Let us know in a like, comment, subscribe, or share.